or the other paddle. Off the center line. You are watching Riverbend Longbows Outdoors. Hey folks, Ray here, Riverbend Longbows Outdoors, and I decided to build me a canoe paddle out of my scraps. And this will be just when I have time, so you'll probably see me in a ton of different outfits through this video because I'm just going to work on it when I have time. But uh, basically just some walnut and maple cutoffs from bows I've been building. So uh, stick around, might be fun. So basically they're just three quarter inch strips dang glued together with clamps I had. And so when I'm done I should have a good solid six inch blade. And uh, I might do more of a beaver tail, I'm not sure yet. And I made it 54 inches, just a four inches shorter than a lot of standard paddles. But uh, it'll have more girth in the handle. I have huge hands, so it'll be more comfortable to hold on to. Because smaller ones, I actually get hand cramps after a while. So, uh, yeah, we'll run it through the sander here later and clean it up and start shaping it out when I have time. It's going to be pretty. Here's a little uh, cutting board or charcut charcuterie board I made here a while back for myself. Same principle, just gang glued. Of course, I have tools to do all this, so it's a lot easier. But uh, this will fit right in the back of my backpack, too, so it'll be really nice. But All right. And I did rip these down to where they're more of a, a 7 8 just a hair shy of an inch. So I have plenty of uh, meat to work with. And uh, this will end up being inch and a half, of course, by the time I'm done. The standard usually is about an inch and a quarter, so it'll give me just a little bit more meat to hang on to. And then, of course, I just gang glued some blocks to shape out a nice, you know, handle so you can cup it nice with your fingers. And so, uh, if you have an old paddle, you know, you could use that as a pattern. Like here's, these are paddles from way back. My wife got us for my uh, wedding present. So I'm just going to kind of use that as a standard pattern and to help me figure out how to shape that handle. And this is my first paddle, so let's do it together. So just going to be kind of hit and miss. We're in this together. All right, so we got it out of the clamps. And the next step is just to clean up all the glue a little bit and then I'll run it through the sander. Um, sorry I didn't show the gluing process. This is just kind of a shooting from the hip video. I didn't even, I wasn't even gonna make a video, but I thought, well, I better, I better, so. Simon, a bloke in the woods, look up his channel, and he did a really great uh, paddle video a couple years ago, and uh, you might wanna refer to that one as well. But as far as resourcing uh, material, if you live close to a cabinet shop or have access to one, you might go talk to them and see about obtaining their scraps. They might let you walk out of there with free scraps, you know, to do a DIY project. They'd probably frown on it if you start making money off of building stuff out of your free material, but um, that's one way to get some material free and then all you need is some glue, so. All right. If you have access to a little hand plane, that works really good for just knocking off the little glue pieces. And uh, you're less likely to gouge out any material. So that's a good way to remove glue or a really sharp chisel and just kind of work under each bead and just get it as level as possible first. So now I got the majority of the high spots knocked off and I got the uh, drum sander out and we're going to run it through there and knock off, get her flat. I know the majority of people don't have equipment like this. This can be done with a belt sander or you can check with your local, here in the U.S., maybe your high school shop class. They have a drum sander possibly. Cabinet shop, as long as you have it all cleaned up, ready to go, they might allow you to They'll run it through for you or whatever, but uh, make short work out of getting it nice and flat and straight.
All right, so we got her flamed out, flattened out, and uh, cleaned up pretty good. So we're just gonna lay her out, and I'm gonna use the other paddle just to kind of trace out a rough design. Looking good. Yep, just gonna kind of center it on there and, and uh, rough trace it and uh, go for it. A little bit wider than the original pattern. Here's the uh, original trace line, but I'm going to go out just a little bit wider. Oh, sorry about that. So I've got a little bit more girth. So I went ahead and laid the paddle in reverse, and I'm going to trace that taper to the bottom so it's kind of a slight beaver tail and see what that looks like. So then it kind of tapers in, same as the top. I think that'll look pretty cool. Bam! I'll just be using a jigsaw with a hard hardwood blade to rough it out. What I usually do is just cut shy of the line. That's not focusing, but that way you can sand up to the line and get it nice and nice and even. All right, so I'll go ahead and get the other ones cut out, and if we have time, we'll get to it on the sander. All right, now that I got it roughed out, I'm going to take it over here to the... Uh, belt sander over here and uh, sand it right down to the line clean it up and we'll start tapering it out and what I'll do is I'll find center and mark it and then start sanding both sides you can do this with the belt sander as well if you have one available or just good old elbow grease Alright, so previously we've roughed it out, I've sanded to the line, I've now got a reference mark of center and I'm going to scribe that along the center and then come on each side of that mark so I can uh, have a guideline for my taper on the blade. So we'll get, we'll get that going. So the easiest way is to use a tape measure, find center, uh, put your pencil there, kind of lock your finger in and use your finger as a guide and then you can just do the length and that gives you a pretty precise center mark. A lot of what I'm, I'm going to do is just eyeballing it because that's what I do. <laughs> but if you can use tools to do it better, then so be it. Do that. So now I'm just going to come in all oh, about three sixteenths on the off the center line. Mark that through, and then do the same on the other side. This just comes from years of experience of woodworking. That'll give me a pretty good reference mark. One other thing you could do is use masking tape and mask that off, cut it to the, trim it off to the edge, so you have a nice clean um, canvas to work with, basically. And just that's basically because the wood grain can actually throw your eye off sometimes, and you want to wander with the wood grain. And uh, so that way you'll have a nice solid working surface. So on the existing paddle you can see how it kind of tapers in from the handle and then s slowly tapers down and that's what we're going to try to do with this and I'm just going to do the on the sander over here and just feather it into place and then a lot of it will just be uh, finished hand sanding. Right. 
like a paddle. Awesome. All right, I think next I'm going to start tapering this and feathering it in so it's a little narrower but keep some girth in the center. And then it'll be a nice, yeah, it feels good too. It's got to start to get a good weight. Stop right there. It's got a fairly uniform pattern to it, and then I'm going to start easing all the edges and get it all finish sanded by hand. Work on my handle, and then I'll go to the hand grip. It's coming along. Now what you saw me doing just a minute ago was just easing the edges and then I can hand shape it from there more. Just getting some meat off and then I can start doing it all by hand now. Alright, so now I'm going to cup the handle like so, which should be fairly easy. I'm going to put my biggest spindle on my spindle sander and just push it in both directions. If you don't have a spindle sander but you have a drill, these are really handy. You can pick these up at hardware stores. They go right in your drill. And uh, I might even actually use this to help clean up once I sand it out. But that would work too. Mount it in a vise or whatever. If you have a vise, clamp the piece down and just use this. Sandpaper grits, I should probably mention. I was using a 60 grit here to just remove the meat good. And then the rest I'll just do by hand with 180 paper and then step down. And then this is a 50 grit wheel. So let's let her rip. All right, so there we go. Pretty roughed out, but I did do reference lines as you can tell, so I didn't go too deep on each side. So awesome I might be making this look easy um, but in all fairness I've been woodworking my entire life but I really think if one took his time and did his reference marks and stuff anybody could really do this with some basic tools so I'm really liking it it's got a little twist in it but not too bad I think I will though since I, I do have a card scraper to pull the surface flat and you just take fine shavings. I'll go ahead and mount it in the vise and I'll do that to pull this blade nice and flat and smooth. Then I've got a curved one too. I can help reduce this. It's really pretty flat. Alright, maybe I don't need to do that. This is has a little curve in it so I can round off my edges. It's working. Well, I'm really hoping this footage is usable. I just realized my camera setting was on full screen, but anyway. <laughs> As you can see, the scraper just pulls off nice little curls and gets gets her shape down. All right, sandpaper time. Makes great bird nest material for fire lighting, by the way. If you don't have a scraper, um, hardware stores sell these too. They're just a little Stanley uh, pocket plane, real handy, and you can use those for using off the edges too, and then you don't gouge into the wood as bad. Even the edges as long as you're going with the grain. Can't even see that can you? Anyway, you use that. So 
so a couple bucks. Now I'm just going to be using some 180 paper. I like to fold quarter sheets in half. And then you slip it inside each other like so. Then it kind of holds on to each other and then you got four fresh sides to work with. A lot easier to hold on to. Here we go. All right, so now I'm just going over it. Before I do the 220 sanding, I found some little pinhole knots. So I'm just gonna fill it with super glue. And then once I do my finished sanding, those will be flush and strong. You like the thumbs up thing? Kind of my thing on Instagram. Now to finish it off, put just a little dab in there and sand into it. And it'll fill that hole with dust and super glue. And then it's, oh, oh I'm not even there. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we're on day five of this project. Of course, it's not really taking that long. It's just I'm doing it when I have time. So uh, this morning I'm gonna uh, finish sanding it with some 220 paper, and then I'll uh, finish it out with uh, some 320 paper. And I decided I'm just gonna use uh, linseed oil, really saturate it. Once that's cured, I'll show you. Once the linseed oil is cured, about from yay down, I'm gonna spar urethane and really seal the blade up good. I was gonna do a fiberglass wrap, but this will probably only see lakes, ponds, and clear water. It'll never see white water, so it'll be taken care of. Plus an oil finished uh, wood, especially when you're using your hands a lot with it, is way more comfortable than a varnish finish. I use it on all my ax handles and stuff. Old trick from way back, so that's where we're at. I won't film much of the sanding because that's boring. So yeah, basically, I'm just going to do some hand sanding. Of course, stay with the grain and uh, just rub everything out that's imperfections. But it is looking really nice, smooth. So here we go. Now 320. thing I am going to do is just take a, some super glue and seal the end grain really good. That's your weak spot. And once that dries we'll buff it out and we're ready for oil. There we go. Alright, one thing I've done is drilled a small hole and placed a hook so I can hang it while it dries. And while I was here, I noticed I still need to do some sanding here. So we'll do that too. <laughs> Just sand the uh, super glue off that came over the edge. We're gonna leave that as is. All right, looking good. All right, it's time to rock and roll. We'll be using the uh, mix of mineral spirits and boiled linseed oil. This is the same mix I used on that canvas a couple years ago. It's about two-thirds linseed oil, one-third mineral spirits, and the mineral spirits will help pull, like a vehicle, pull the oil into the grain. And uh, I got it shaken up. We're just going to put it in a little dish and rub it on. That's plenty. Okay. Anyway, just want a clean cotton rag. Pretty straightforward. Saturate it. Start rubbing it in. Just really work it as much as you can. And uh, once you get it good and saturated, hang it. Let it dry for a while. Come back in an hour or a couple. Rub some more in. Look at that. And what's good about this is uh, if you see some spots that needs work, you can always go back and re-sand it. So, all right, folks, I think that's about it for this video. Once I do this, like I said, I'm going to spray uh, spar urethane on the blade, get it sealed up. And uh, thanks for watching. It's been fun.
Thanks for watching.